Hello and welcome to this tutorial for Microsoft Excel users. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at absolute cell references. And just to remind you that we've already looked at relative cell references, which basically whenever you create a calculation in Excel, it's better to refer to a cell reference than just type in the numbers. And if I click on cell D3 here, you see what I mean? And if you look in the formula bar, we see the calculation or the formula which is equals B3 multiplied by C3, which is obviously the rental price multiplied by the number of rentals. But the important point here is that when I copy the formula down, what I need to have happen is that the formula updates. So the next cell down refers to row four, the next cell down refers to row five and so on. So if I just delete all the formulas out from row four down to row nine, just select those and hit the delete key. Don't worry about the colors, by the way, that's just the conditional formatting being automatically applied. So ignore that for now. So we've got my original calculation, B3 times C3. And what I'm going to do before I copy it down is show you the formula behind the result. And the keyboard shortcut is the control key. And typically it's the key just below the escape key on the left hand side of a standard keyboard. And you'll see on that it has the, the grave or grave accent. So it's control and that key, and that reveals all the formulas. Now the important thing we're interested in here is in column D, and I'm going to copy that formula down the rest of those cells in column D. So just put the mouse pointer bottom right of the cell. I'm sure you know by now, click and drag down to those remaining rows, release the mouse button, and you'll see the effects of relative cell references being applied by Excel. In other words, as I copy the formula down, Excel automatically updates the formula to row five in this case, row six, row seven, etc. Now, in most cases, that's fantastic, is exactly what you want to have happen, and it's a great time saver. There are some circumstances where you don't want a cell reference in a formula to change as you copy the formula down. And that's where you would apply absolute cell references. And that's what we're going to look at right now. So first of all, let's just return this sheet to its normal view. Again, just that control and spare key or grave accent. And that returns the view back to normal. I'm going to go to another worksheet now. Now, this isn't a real world example. It's just to illustrate, first of all, how an absolute cell reference works versus a relative cell reference. So you see here we have our list of movies, rental prices, and we have a blank column here which is going to feature our discount price. And you can see over on the right there we have our discount price. It's been typed in already. So cell F2, if I click on that, contains the value. So I don't want to have to retype the price or refer to the cell repeatedly and create a formula for each cell. Obviously, I want to be able to create a single calculation or a single reference and copy that down. So let's click into cell C3. Creating an absolute cell reference is simply a modified version of a regular cell reference. So all I need to do here is type equals. I'm going to click on the cell F2. It contains my 25 pence discount price. And then I'm going to go to the formula bar and just use the arrow keys now and go to the beginning of the F. And we're going to apply a dollar symbol to the F, so or before the F. So on a standard keyboard, shift and four gets from the dollar symbol. Your keyboard might be slightly different depending on where you are. So it's a dollar symbol anyway, wherever that might be. Just use the arrow key to come before the number two. Again, shift and four in my case, the dollar symbol. So the formula is equals dollar F dollar two. And what those dollar symbols do is force Excel to stay locked onto that cell reference. It'll become clearer when I copy the formula down and you will see the behavior. So I'm just going to click on the tick to accept that formula. And now I'm going to reveal the formula behind the uh, calculation there. So control and the grave accent or spare key below the escape key. And now we can see the cell reference in the cell itself, C3. Again, let's put the mouse pointer bottom right, click and drag down. And you'll see there that this time Excel does not update the cell reference. It remains locked on F2 all the way down. So think of an absolute reference as simply a fixed or a locked cell reference that will not change when you copy the formula down rows or across columns. 
Now when I created the first formula here, you saw that I simply typed in the dollar symbol, but Excel has a way of automatically applying the dollar symbol to your absolute cell references, and I'm going to show you that now. First of all, I'm going to delete again the cells in column C that are already selected, so I'll just hit the delete key, and let's go back to cell C3. I'll leave the formula showing for now, so let's type equals, click on cell F2 again, and now I'm going to press on the keyboard, on a standard keyboard, you know the function keys at the top, the function key F4. Now when I press F4, you'll see there that Excel automatically applied those dollar symbols. Now if you repeatedly press the F4 key, you'll see something happen. So if I press the F4 key again, you'll notice that the dollar symbol is now only applied to the row number, not the column reference or the column letter. If I press F4 a third time, the dollar symbol is now applied to the column and not the row. So you can have a mixed absolute cell reference where either the column or the row only is locked and the other part of the reference is flexible. I won't dwell on this just now, but in the next tutorial, I'll show an example of exactly how that works and why it could be really useful. But let's just carry on and press the F4 key one more time. And there we see, finally, it goes back to its non-absolute form, the just a standard cell reference. And I'll press F4 one more time, and there we have the, the full absolute reference. So let's just accept that formula one more time then. I'll click on the tick on the left-hand side of the formula bar there. And this time I'll double click, and that automatically runs the formula all the way down there. And finally, if I just return the worksheet to its normal view, so we see the results rather than the formulas, again, just that keyboard shortcut, control and grave accent, you'll see the sale price has now updated to reflect the discount deducted. Now, a more realistic example of how you might use an absolute reference would be to combine absolute and relative references into a single formula. In other words, that column C, the daily discount column, is pretty much redundant. You don't need that because clearly we can see the daily discount featured in cell F2. So what I'm going to do here is go to another worksheet, which is more realistic. And here we have simply a rental price and a sale price. And all we need to do is apply the discount when we create the calculation. So to do that, simply click into, again, here, cell C3. So we're going to work out the sale price for the movie 2001. So we're going to type equals, we want the original price, and then we're going to deduct off the discount. So minus symbol for deduction or subtraction. And now I'll click on to cell E2, in this case, where my discount value is. Press the F4 key, we get the absolute reference. I'm just going to click on the tick to accept that. And then this time, put the mouse pointer bottom right of the cell and double click, and then it'll run the formula all the way down. And if you take a look at the formula bar, as I just move down, you will see, importantly, we have one part of that formula is relative, which are the values in column B, and the other part, which is referring to the discount price, which is clearly locked as an absolute cell reference onto cell E2. So there's a more typical example where you're combining relative and absolute cell references. Finally, I just want to comment on the F4 key. On a standard keyboard, it's very simple to find. You'll find it, obviously, the fourth function key along, nice and easy. If you have a laptop keyboard, you might be wondering where those function keys are. Now, laptops vary in the type of keyboard you might have, so I can't possibly answer this for everyone. But if you have a standard laptop keyboard, you most likely have those function keys as a top row of keys, but they default typically to something like multimedia keys, so you might have volume controls, you might have an email button, etc. Different laptops have different controls linked to those keys. But at the bottom left of a laptop keyboard, typically to the left of the spacebar, you may find, or you should find, a button labelled FN. FN is short for function, and that's how you activate the function keys on a laptop. So if you hold down that FN button, and press the F4 key on a laptop keyboard, you'll get the same action as just pressing F4 on a standard keyboard. There are ways to lock the function key. One possibility is that if you press the function or the FN key and the escape key as a combination, you will lock the function keys. In other cases, you might have to do something a little bit more complicated and long-winded. 
it depends on the laptop so what I would suggest you do is simply Google the name of your laptop and then add on the words function lock and then see what results you get hopefully you'll find a way of locking the function keys on your laptop should you need to do that I hope that wasn't too long-winded and uh, it made it semi-clear at least and you can apply absolute cell references to the spreadsheets you're working on thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time